This video is on permutation groups, so let's review what a permutation group was. We designated it by SN, which is the set of all one-to-one -one mappings from a set A to A. Well, I should have told you what A is. A is the set containing the numbers 1, 2, 3, up to N. So it's uh, these elements of SN are one-to-one -one functions that map a set of N elements to itself. And I have to say sigma is one-to-one. -one. The set of all one-to-one -one mappings from the set A to itself is a permutation group on N letters, they say. So let's review uh, what a one-to-one -one function is. A function is one-to-one -one well, let's just say this is its domain. Well, that would be A, and its range would be A. And if A and B get mapped to the same element over here, in other words, if sigma of A is equal to sigma of B, this picture just can't happen. We cannot have two things, two different things being mapped to the same image. So we say if sigma of A is equal to sigma of B, then we must be able to conclude that A is equal to B. And this is how you prove that a function is one to one. You suppose that uh, the function evaluated at A is equal to the function evaluated at B, and then prove that A must be equal to B. So the first thing we'll do is prove that SN, the set of permutations of A, is a group under function composition. First of all, notice that right here I wrote, to prove that function composition is a binary operation, uh, we must show that for uh, sigma and phi in SN, we have to show that sigma phi is in SN. What I mean here is this but we just assume that you know that this product notation means function composition. So uh, we, need to, we, we know, of course, that if sigma maps A to A and sigma is 1 to 1 and phi maps A to A and phi is 1 to 1, that's what we're given, we know certainly that sigma circle phi maps A to A. That's no problem. But we, need to, we do need to show that it is one to one. So just like I told you in the last slide, assume sigma of phi of A is equal to sigma of phi of B and we need to show that A is equal to B. Well, sigma is one to one. So if sigma of this in A is equal to sigma of this in A, we know we can conclude that phi of A is equal to phi of B because sigma is one to one. And now if phi of A is equal to phi of B, we can conclude that A is equal to B because phi is one to one. Therefore, we have proven that the phi circle sigma is one to one, or I'll just write, therefore, sigma phi is one to one. And that is the membership rule for the set SN. So we say, therefore, sigma phi is in SN for any sigma and any phi that belongs to SN. So this uh, proves that function composition is a binary operation on the set SN. Finishing our proof, we have to verify that function composition is associative, and we have already done that. So we know that's true. 
The identity in SN is the mapping that sends each element of A to itself. And so we already denoted that by, well, we could say little i is equal to this. Let's just use our cycle notation. The mapping that sends each element to itself. In other words, little i of a equals a for all a in capital A, for all those numbers 1 through n. And this is the identity. So that i circle sigma equals sigma and sigma circle i equals sigma. Or I could just use i sigma equals sigma and sigma i equals sigma. When we know that we're in Sn, we do not need to be uh, careful to use the function composition symbol because we know that's the operation. I'm not going to spend much time on inverses. <clears throat> you know that one-to-one -one functions have inverses. And basically what you do is you just reverse the arrows. So in other words, if uh, sigma uh, is a one-to-one -one function mapping a to a and sigma of little a is equal to b, then we're just going to define sigma inverse of b to be equal to a. And then no the notation gets a little bit tricky here, so I'm just going to write this. Uh, this is how you define the inverse. You just essentially reverse the arrows. Uh, if you if you had cycle notation, if you wrote sigma equals one two three four, let's say, then sigma inverse. Well, one goes to two, two goes to three, and three goes to four. And so you want just the opposite. You want two mapping to one, three mapping to two, four mapping to three. So you can just change the direction: four, three, two, one. And remember, there's other ways of writing these. I mean, I could have written sigma as uh, 2, 3, 4, 1. Many, there's several ways you could write it. Sigma inverse here, it could be written as 1, 4, 3, 2. Or it could be written as 2, 1, 4, 3. Um, it doesn't matter. They're just cycles. It doesn't matter what you start the cycle with. But notice, sigma of 1 is 2, and sigma inverse of 2 is 1. Sigma of 3 is 4. Sigma inverse of 4 is 3. So we have done in this specific example what we outlined above. So for the rest of this lecture, we'll stay in the group S5. This, the group of all permutations of the set containing 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So how many permutations are there? Well, you probably know that there are 5 factorial, but you can think of it this way. You, you have 5 choices where you could send 1. You could send 1 to itself. You could send it to 2, 3, 4, or 5. So after you've made the decision where to send one, then you could choose a. Uh, you could have f f uh, four choices for two. You couldn't send two to the same place you did one, so you have four choices for two and three choices for three, two choices for four, and then uh, one choice where to send five. That's how you get five factorial. So there's five factorial permutations, five factorial elements in S five. And in general, here's a new word. The order of a group. Let's define that right here. The order of a group G, and let's say a finite group for now. The order of a finite group G is the number of elements in G. Now be careful because we're also going to be talking about the order of an element in the group. That's different. But the order of the group is just the number of elements in the group and it's denoted this way. 
the order of G. It's like absolute value signs. So in general, the order of the group SN is N factorial. That's how many elements are in the group. So um, we want to, for now, know how to calculate in, in SN and understand some basic uh, things about the elements of the group. Uh, just in case you've forgotten, I want to go back over cycle notation briefly. We have our set A containing 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then a permutation is a one-to-one -one course uh, mapping from this set to itself. So it may send 1 to 2 and 2 to 1 and 3 to itself and 4 to 5 and 5 to 4. This is an example of maybe one that we would call sigma. And it's they're not written, but it means 1 is mapped to 2, sigma of 2 is equal to 1, sigma of 3 is equal to 3, and so on. And we found an easier way to write these using cycle notation rather than these brackets. We would write sigma equals, and I just put down 1 first and see what happens. Well, 1 is mapped to 2, so I write 2. Then I go back up and see 2 is mapped to 1, and that's the beginning of the cycle, so I close it. So now let's see, 3. I check, oh, 3 goes to 3, so I, I can just close it right away. And 4 is mapped to 5, and 5 is mapped to 4. We don't need to keep the 3 in there. You can if you want, but this is just the cycle in cycle notation, product of two 2 cycles. 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, and 4 and 5 are mapped to each other. So that was just a quick review. We did quite a bit of that in class, and I hope you remember. When we write the permutations in their simplest form, we want to write them as a product of disjoint cycles. It's always better to leave your permutations written that way. So, uh, for example, if you were given the permutation 1, 2, 4, uh, 2, 3, 5, you see that these two three cycles are not disjoint. I see we have a two in this one and a two in this one. So I want to multiply these together. Not really multiply function composition, but we'll just use the term multiply. Okay, so function composition you always read this way. And so first, well, I'll put one down. And I look and I see what this permutation does to one is it leaves it alone. And then I plug 1 in here and I go to 2. So 1 is moved to 2 by the product of these two cycles. All right, now I go to 2 on the right again. 2 is sent to 3, and then that's plugged into this one, and 3 is not moved. So 2 is sent to 3 by the product. Go back to 3. 3 goes to 5 come over here, plug 5 in, and 5 is fixed, so 3 goes to 5. Back to the right, 5 goes to 2, because it's closed here, it goes back to the beginning. 5 goes to 2, and plugging 2 in here, we see it is moved to 4. And now 4 is fixed, and here 4 is taken to 1, so I close. So now, I, this is the proper way to write that cycle, that, that permutation. This is a permutation, but it's the product of two permutations in SN. And in simplified form, it is the 5 cycle on the right. Um, let's see, one other example. Uh, let's take uh, 1, 2 times 1, 3, 2. Again, these are not disjoint. There's a 1 and a 2 and a 1 and a 2 here. So I'll write down my 1. 1 goes to 3, and over here 3 is fixed. Come back to the right. 3 goes to 2, and 2 is sent to 1. So I close. And now let's check everything out. There's no 4s or 5s in here, so nothing happens to them. But let's check 2. 2 goes to 1. 1 goes to 2. So this in simplified form is just a 2 cycle 1 3 
If you see something written like this, 1, 2 times 3, 4, 5, you're done. That, that is, those two uh, cycles are disjoint. And it is, you just leave it like that. Disjoint cycles commute. Others do not if they're not disjoint. So let me show you an example. If you have uh, this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that we just wrote up there, if you multiply it out, you'll see it's 3, 4, 5 times 1, 2. It doesn't make any difference. If they're disjoint, you can move them all around. But if you take uh, 1, 2, 3 and multiply it to 2, 5, you get, well, you're not going to get, let's put it that way, 2, 5 times 1, 2, 3. They're not the same. If you multiply this one on the left, you will get 1, 2, 5, 3. And that is not what you get on the right, which is 1, 5, 2, 3. You check that yourself. Here we talk about the order of an element of the group. Not the order of Sn, which is n factorial, but the order of a permutation. Sigma is the smallest natural number n, such that sigma repeated n times will give us the identity permutation. So let's call uh, this permutation here sigma, 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's see. Well, I'm, I'll do it out this time, and then I'll show you an easier way to, to take powers of these. If we look at sigma squared, that's 1, 2, 3, 4 times 1, 2, 3, 4. And we will get 1. Now watch what happens. 1 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 3. So we get 1, 3. Th and then 3 goes to 4 and 4 is taken back to 1. So we close. Now we want to see what happens to 2. 2 goes to 3. Ooh. 1, 2, 3. I'm sorry. I had an extra digit in there. Uh, 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 4. 4 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 2. So we close. There's no 5 in there so there's nothing moves 5. So that's sigma squared. Now let me show you another way you could do that because you're just repeating the same cycle 1, 2, 3, 4. If I square it, notice I just say 1 goes to 2 to 3. I'm just going to skip 1. So I get 1, 3. And then 3 would go to 4, which goes to 1. Closes. Now I take 2 and I skip 1. 2 to 3 to 4 and 4 to 1 to 2. So you can actually just take powers of cycles by skipping the right uh, number. Let's, let's cube it. So sigma cubed will be, I'll do it out the long way once, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's sigma times sigma squared, 1, 3, 2, 4. Now powers of one element always commute in a group, so it wouldn't have mattered if I had put sigma squared times sigma, uh, because powers of sigma will commute. All right, so let's see. What we get is, we'll put down a 1. 1 goes to 3, which goes to 4. 4 goes to 2, which goes to 3. 3 goes to 1, which goes to 2. And 2 goes to 4, which in turn gets sent back to 1, and we close it. Notice also we could have done it the other way. If I just write down sigma right here, this was sigma, I can cube it by just going up to sigma, not sigma squared, go back up to sigma and say, well, here's sigma of 1, sigma squared, sigma cubed. So I'm just going to skip over 2. And I get 1, skipping 2 will go to 4, skipping 2 will go to 3, and skipping 2 will go to 2, and skipping 2 sends me back to 1. 
and you go ahead and calculate sigma to the fourth and you will get the identity. A four cycle goes back to itself after four applications of that permutation. Notice if you go up here and raise it to the fourth power, you're going to skip three. So it'd be one goes to skip three, one. Two goes to skip three, two, etc. All right, now here it says find the order of this permutation. But that is not written in its simplest form. It is, they are not disjoint cycles. So if we want to call this thing something, that's fine. But let's rewrite it in its simplest form as a product of disjoint cycles. So I put 1. 1 goes to 4. 4 is fixed. 4 goes to 5. 5 goes to 2 and 2 is fixed. 2 goes to 3. 3 is fixed. 3 goes to 5 and 5 back to 1. I close. So beta is really just a 5 cycle. And the order of beta, by the way I didn't show you this, we use the same notation. The order of beta is 5. The order of an n cycle, just one n cycle or m cycle is m. In general, the order of an m cycle in Sn is m. So if uh, sigma is a 3 cycle, the order is 3. But remember, always write them in simplest form before you start computing or before you try to find the order of the element. Always put it in as a product of disjoint cycles. All right, so here we're going to calculate the order of some permutations, and I'd like you to see if you could generalize. Here we have a two cycle times a three cycle, and they are disjoint. So if I call this, let's say, beta, I want to know the order of beta. Well, if I square it, I'm going to get, just skip over one. One goes to three and back to one. So 1 and 3 are going to be fixed. If you want to write those down, you get this. You don't need to. Now 2 will be sent to 5 by beta and then 4 by beta again. So 2 goes to 4 and 4, skipping over, will go to 5. And 5 will go to 4 and then to 2. So beta squared is just the 3 cycle, 2, 4, 5 beta cubed. Just go back to beta. You don't even need to look at beta squared and multiply it to that. Just go back to beta and you'll see if you put down 1, 1 will go to 3, then to 1, and back to 3. So we get our 2 cycle back again. 3 will go to 1, 1 will go to 3, and then back to 1. So now our 2 cycle comes back. And this one, we're cubing it now. So we're going to skip over 2. 2 will go to skip 5, 4, back to 2. 5 will go to 5, 4 will go to 4. So beta cubed is just this 2 cycle. Beta to the 4th, go back to beta. If you raise a 2 cycle to the 4th power, it's going to disappear again. And this one <coughs> will just come back. So we have 2, 5, 4. Beta to the fourth is just this four cycle. You can multiply them out and check this for yourself. But when we cubed it, it disappeared. So multiplying one more of these, we just get two, five, four back again. And now beta to the fifth will give us, well, beta to the fifth is going to put our two cycle back in there. And beta to the fifth will be Oh, well, you might, you might want to write, write this out 254 times 254, but it's the same thing. Beta to the fifth will be uh, 245. And now beta to the sixth will be equal to, well, the two cycle disappears again, and 245 times 254. Uh, will 
give us the identity. So the order, the order of beta is equal to 6. I know you guys are going to need a little more time on that. You might want to write it out, but um, check and see that you can get that one. You might have to write out more. Uh, and we'll do more in class. I just don't want to spend make this video too too long. So what what the order of it was six. Notice you had a two cycle and a three cycle, and the order was six. Now in the next one, if we call this thing, let's call it uh, gamma. If we square it, we're going to get well one. We'll skip over three and go to two. Two will skip over one and go to three and 3 will go to 1. And this will be 4, 6, 5. Gamma cubed, applying gamma, if you just go back here to this, and 1 skip 2 sends you to 1, 3 skip 2 sends you to 3. In fact, everybody gets sent to itself. So we say that the order of gamma in this case is 3. We had disjoint cycles, both of length 3 and we got the order 3. Here we had cycle of length 2, cycle of length 3, disjoint cycles, the order was 6. So can you guess what's going on here? What will be the order of the 4 cycle times the 2 cycle? They are disjoint. It's going to take four repetitions of this to make this disappear and two repetitions of this to make it disappear. So 4 will be the order of this. The order is 4. If you call this, uh, I don't know, sigma, you can check yourself, I mean rho. Rho to the fourth is equal to the identity permutation. And in general, uh, what do you think? How do you think we could generalize this? Well, the order of a permutation is the least common multiple of its cycle length. Now we are assuming that the permutation is simplified, that the cycles are disjoint. It's the least common multiple. And go back to those examples and you'll see why. Because it takes m, m times for an m cycle to disappear and n times for an n cycle to disappear then if they both disappear it will be a multiple of both m and n the least common multiple now we've already talked about inverses here but just to mention it one more time this is called a two cycle or a transposition a transposition it just changes the place transposes uh, two two of the elements of a two numbers what does that mean about the inverse of a transposition well if it's a two cycle then the order is two so that means that for example the cycle one two times one two or it is equal to one so it means that a transposition a transposition is its own inverse. What is the inverse of 3, 4, 2, 1? Well, we said that you could write it 1, 2, 4, 3. Just reverse it. That's one way. But that's the same thing as uh, 2, 4, 3, 1. It's the same thing as 4, 3, 1, 2. Different ways to write it. But the easiest is just to change you know, just change the order of the of the permutation, change the um, direction of the cycle. 
what is the inverse of 1, 3, 2, 4, 5? Well, it's in simplest notation. So the inverse of 1, 3 is 1, 3. And the inverse of 2, 4, 5 would be 5, 4, 2. So there's the inverse. This is its own inverse. And this we have to reverse the, the numbers. Of course, if you want to just reverse the numbers, you could write 3, 1, 5, 4, 2. That's exactly the same thing. You just have to make sure that the numbers are going in the opposite directions. Now, this one down here, the inverse of 1, 4, 5, you want to re that is not disjoint. So this one, you, you must multiply it together first. So this one, if we multiply it together, I write down my 1. 1 is fixed, 1 goes to 4. Go back here, 4 is fixed, 4 goes to 5. Back here, 5 goes to 2, 2 is fixed. 2 goes to 3, 3 is fixed. 3 goes to 5, and 5 goes to 1. I close. So it's just this 5 cycle. And I write the inverse by, again, just, uh, I'll just reverse it. So if this is what we call uh, gamma, then I can say gamma inverse is equal to, and I'll just 3, 2, 5, 4, 1. Many other ways to write it. And the last thing we're going to talk about is even and odd permutations doesn't mean these aren't numbers, so even is not going to mean a multiple of 2, of course. We're going to define it. First of all, you have to know that every permutation can be written as a product of transpositions. So let's just do some examples. If I take 1, 2, 3, 4, that is the same as, now notice I put the 1 down and I go 1, 4, and then 1, 3, and then 1, 2. This is just one way of doing it. Notice I went 1, 4, 1, 3, 1, 2. Multiply it out and see. Let's just check. Write down your 1. 1 goes to 2. 2 is fixed the rest of the way. 2 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 3. 3 is fixed. 3 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 4. 4 goes to 1. You see? And if we have uh, this, this is written as an odd number of transpositions. We're going to call it an odd permutation. Notice I could also say 1, 2, 3, 4 is equal to 1, 4. Uh, how about uh, 2, 5, 2, 5? What's that? That's the identity. And then I could put 1, 3, and I could put 1, 2, and maybe I'll put a, another 1, 2, and another 1, 2. OK, so here's another way to write it. Notice these just cancel each other out. Those are inverses. These are inverses. So you still have 1, 4, 1, 3, 1, 2. But notice that no matter how I write this 4 cycle as a product of transpositions, it's going to have an odd number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that's the way it is. When you take any one of the permutations and write it as a product of transpositions, it will either always be written as an odd number or as an even number of transpositions. So that's where we get the odd and even. Uh, let's take a, another one. Let's take 1, 3, 2 times 1, 2, times 3, 4, 5, 1. OK? Now, I don't even have to simplify this. These are not disjoint. But to find out if it's even or odd, I really don't even have to simplify it. I can just say, OK, first of all, I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to write it as 1, 2, 1, 3. 1, 2 is already a transposition, so I put that in. I definitely want to have this order. And then here, I'm just going to change it to 3, 1, 3, 5, 3, 4. And I have six of them. 
So this is an even permutation. Now we didn't simplify it, but if you're just asked is a permutation even or odd, you just write it as a product of transpositions and if it is an even number of transpositions the permutation is even, if it's odd it's odd. Okay, so just uh, last two problems here. Classify the following as either even or odd and find the order of each and why don't we find the inverse too and inverse. So let's call this one alpha. Alright, so alpha is not disjoint. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I'm not just writing it as even or odd, um, I want to simplify it and write it as a product of disjoint cycles. So I'll put 1. 1 is fixed, 1 goes to 3. 3 is fixed, 3 goes to 5. 5 is fixed, 5 goes to 2. 2 goes to 4 and 4 is fixed. 4 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1. Alright, so I have alpha is simply a 5 cycle. So I know that the order of alpha is equal to 5. I know that alpha inverse, one way to write it is just to reverse 4, 2, 5, 3, 1 so that the product of these two is the identity. And if I want to write it as a uh, classify it as even or odd, I think I'll just write up here, write it as a product of transpositions. I'll have 1, 4, 1, 2, 1, 5, 1, 3, and we see that there are four of them, so alpha is an even permutation. And gosh, uh, this is the same kind of thing, so let's, let's cancel that example and stop here.